This is Katie from Hearts Content Farmhouse. Um, today we are going to be making a sourdough pizza crust. So if you have been into sourdough for a long time, you know that unless you are baking at least a couple times a week with your starter, you end up having to discard some of your starter when you feed it, which means just throw it in the trash and it feels really wasteful. So we are always looking for recipes where you can use that discard starter. Um, I do already have a video on sourdough carrot cupcakes, which is a great way to use them, but it's not something you can make all the time. Um, this recipe, however, is something that you can make on a regular basis. And we make it sometimes just because we have starter to discard. Um, it is sourdough pizza dough. There's two ways to do it. If you want to use discard starter, you're going to have to add a little bit of yeast and then you're just using that sourdough discard for flavor. Um, if you have a fed starter that you want to use, you don't need yeast at all. As long as you have a really active starter, it's plenty to have your dough rise, especially because of pizza crust, you don't need a lot of height. The structure isn't as important. A flat pizza crust is not the end of the world the way it is with a loaf of bread. So it's a great way to try baking without yeast and using a starter for rise without a lot of pressure on you. <laughs> so we are gonna just combine all of our ingredients in a large mixing bowl. What we need is three and a half cups of bread flour. I would really recommend using bread flour for this so that you get a chewy crust. One and a half cups of your starter. Three quarters of a cup of water. You might need a little bit more, but start with three quarters of a cup. One teaspoon of yeast, if you're using the discard starter. Two teaspoons of salt and two and a half tablespoons of sugar. I know it sounds like a lot of sugar, but this does have a long rise time. The fermentation while it is sitting in the fridge is gonna break some of that sugar down, and it's not actually gonna taste sweet at all. Without that sugar, um, you, it's actually probably gonna to taste too sour, and you're not gonna have as much food in there for your bacteria to feed on while it's rising. So you just dump everything in a mixing bowl, stir it with a wooden spoon, cover it for 30 minutes, and then come back. What you're doing is just letting the flour and water sort of get acquainted with each other, the flour starts to hydrate, and if things look very, very dry at this point, like it's not forming any type of cohesive mass, go ahead and add in a couple more tablespoons of flour, stir it again, and then see what you think. Um, what you're looking for is, it doesn't have to look perfectly smooth, you haven't kneaded it yet. You want it to be holding its shape, coming together, not sticking to the sides of the bowl, but also not having little dry crumbly bits that aren't getting worked up. So once you're happy with the texture, you dump it out onto the counter and we start to knead. You can do this in your stand mixer or your bread machine, but it doesn't need a super long kneading time, so I just do it by hand. We're doing this for five minutes, the dough is gonna start it's gonna feel a little bit wet at first, and then it's gonna feel sticky, and then it's gonna feel smooth. And once it's reached that smooth stage, you're done. You don't have to knead anymore. So um, we go ahead, just shape it gently into a ball, put it in a clean bowl, grease the bowl, and then cover it really tightly. Since it's gonna be in the fridge, you don't wanna just use a towel. You wanna to use greased plastic wrap or a tightly fitting rubber lid, because it's gonna dry out unless it has a tight lid on it. Um, put it in the fridge overnight. If you don't wanna do that, you can also just leave it out at room temperature. It'll take about four to five hours, um, but when it's doubled in size, you are ready to bake. So this recipe makes three pizzas for me. Obviously, you break off a piece of dough and it's however big you want it to be. For me, since I bake on a pizza stone um, that's about the size of a baking sheet, it's I can get three pizzas that are oval shaped and fit that pizza stone well. It's I can't tell you how many pizzas it's going to make you because it depends on what you're baking it on, obviously. <laughs> so you um, go ahead and take it out after it's rise, divide it into however many pizzas it is making, and then let it rest on the counter for about 30 minutes. Let it come up to room temperature, become easier to work with, and then start stretching it out into the final shape. Um, if you want to know my recipe for how I make pizza with this dough, I will go ahead and link that also. Um, but this recipe is just for the dough from this point forward. Um, it's personal, it's up to you, bake it however you want. So I hope this gives you another way to use your discard starter. If you haven't tried sourdough, I hope this helps you see that it's really versatile and I hope you give it a try. So thank you for watching and have a good day.